thank you very much, uh, State Secretary Jakobsen, dear Axel, for this excellent introduction. May I also thank you for your leadership in co-sharing uh, this working group and for dedication of all members. We have risen to the occasion of working together, not without intense debate, we must be very honest, and the working group has today delivered uh, its final proposal. I have the privilege and honor to briefly present this proposal. I, I hope you had the chance to, 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 to have a look at the draft uh, outcome. Well, recalling some figures, uh, as you see on this, uh, on this uh, first map, provides the rationale for our meeting today. As the Director General has just outlined the scale of the impact in education, it's really huge in terms of inequality, technology, and financing, gender, just to mention a few of them. You can see now, I hope some numbers will appear immediately. Thanks for my colleagues to put in, fine. Some 700 million children and youth are still affected by full or partial closure uh, schools and universities. Behind each one lies the risk of learning loss, the risk of poverty, the risk of dropout, health, threats to health and well being. In short, the threat to human development. And this pandemic has also changed how we work together as an international community, and this is the reason why we are here today, to change the system. United around the sense of urgency and solidarity, a new kind of sense of solidarity. I can say that solidarity is a kind of key word we, we take as a lesson from this crisis. We mobilize a wide set of partners to innovate for learning continuity and to deploy solutions uh, and advocate for prioritizing education in the recovery. Well, this is the only way forward, in my opinion. Rethinking of global cooperation in education with the ultimate goal to make things happen better at country level for every child and every youth. Well, you recall that this proposal uh, was developed in response to the call made uh, uh, at the 2020 Global Education Meeting as a uh, as, uh, Secretary of State Jacobson already mentioned. His declaration mandated UNESCO to design with partners and lead a consultation to rethink and improve the global education cooperation mechanism to fit the post-COVID-19 contest. The proposal is the outcome of intensive and extensive consultations and consensus building across all regions and key constituencies. I thank once again all of you for that. And this is based on the principle of SDG4. I want to mention, we, all of us know that, but I want to mention once again, as a universal, holistic, and lifelong learning agenda. In other words, it's about ensuring the right education for all. All means all. This framework is, one, is not a one-size-fits-all model, we know. It aims to add value to the existing global, regional, and country-level coordination mechanisms and platforms so that all actors, really all actors across the board, cooperate more efficiently and effectively to drive national progress towards SDG4 from now to 2030. And it means defining the how of this acceleration namely through supporting coalitions of countries or partners to develop time-bound initiatives to reach the targets. I should say it's conservative in its structure, yet innovative in its functions. Let me explain a little bit about the functions now. There are three key main functions of this mechanism. First, promoting evidence-based policy formulation and implementation and recommending priority actions. It will be like a, a global knowledge hub. Second, the GCM is tasked to monitor progress and improve the availability of data. We all know that knowing where the world stands and holding partners and countries to account 
for their commitments is absolutely crucial. Third, this is really last but not least, advocating for greater mobilization and better use of domestic and international funding. Well, to carry these functions forward, a lighter and more empowered structure is envisaged. And that's what we needed. That's what the missing point. It will encompass two principal institutional elements. You can see on this slide a little bit, the, 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 you know, the, the, the visual of the structure. First, a strengthened SDG4 education high level steering committee representative of all global education community. It will consist of a leadership group at ministerial, our head of agency level, together with uh, Sherpa group. It will be closely linked to the relevant global cooperation forums uh, platforms, including the HLPF, uh, the multilateral education platform, the global education forum, and the CCNGO, of course. Second, a dedicated interagency secretariat hosted by, at UNESCO will support the committee and other GC forums and platforms. So this is about harmonizing the system and uh, making the system working to the same direction. These were some of the highlights of the proposals put forward by the dedicated working group. And then of course, there are more detail to be fine-tuned in, in the coming weeks and months. But its endorsement today, let me, that, let me underscore this point, its endorsement today only marks the beginning it marks the reset of a new course for collective action. State Secretary Jakobsen and I thank you very much for your support. And it's now, as you said, Axel, I think it's our shared responsibility now to carry it forward, to put it into action, to make our work meaningful for every child and youth to whom we made a commitment some years ago in uh, 2015, when this beautiful action plan for a better society, for a better world, protecting the planet, people and prosperity has been launched. I thank you very much.